Word is out amongst New York's art community that the Friedman Bender Gallery is hosting Andile's work. With his pieces fetching up to $20,000 at Christie's in London, there's great excitement here. Dile, how are you? I'm good, good man. Awesome. Wow, everything looks great. Congratulations. Your first solo international show in New York City. This must be a dream come true. Fantastic. I'm, I'm, I'm really over the moon because this has been, you know, quite an amazing, you know, opportunity to have been here at this stage. But this is really like a lifelong dream of myself when because growing up in the Eastern Cape, I know I've played with clay and didn't even know that I could make a living out of this thing. But then eventually when I came to Cape Town, really saw that I have a talent and a passion for this thing. And I could see how people are responding to it and really it driven me and gave me fuel to continue doing what I'm doing because I could see how people are responding to, to my work. And I see a lot of like old and new in your work, like a bit of the ancient and the futuristic. Is that something you were concentrating on? Well, the, the, the body of work that you're seeing here, really, it's almost like a, a lifelong story of myself, the experiences, you know, of my cultural background, the places, my immediate environment, places that have been collected items and things like that. Your work has evolved from ornamental pieces to real great pieces of art. My work has really evolved over time from the vessels to objects and I had found myself doing installations because what happens with me is that I was taught to observe, to listen, to really interact and participate. One of the things that the Freeman Bender asked me was, we would like to see if you can come up with the lighting. In my head, in the beginning, the challenge I had was like light, clay, and you know, I'm not necessarily a lighting person. So Julian uh, from Southern Guild said, okay, let's take this. How are you feeling now? What inspires you right now? And I was like, it's a form, it's, a, it's, it's, it's the architect, it's, it's all the geometric forms that I'm seeing every day in this industrial you know, area in Woodstock and the skyscrapers from different places. I started with the form. You can certainly see the architectural influences in your work, a lot of hard lines and shapes, but also some soft curves. This looks like um, female forms, am I right? You, you're certainly right. And if you're looking at these two pieces here, this piece really resembles like a, a woman's body. And in this case, these three pieces, I call them the Jola sisters. And then one of the reasons, again, for me, it has to do with the, the acknowledging of the people that uh, being part of what I am here. So in making these pieces, it was really paying homage to what they contributed to my career. The name of this collection is Tamaku, which is Tosa for I am grateful, an expression of thanks to Andile's ancestors. Every day he makes all he can of his talent. I can definitely see the architectural aspect of a city skyline in this one. Well, you're certainly right because this piece is inspired by Woodstock, by the dockyard, by the containers. If you're looking at this piece, like the aerial view of this, it looks like the city grid, then the skyscrapers that you see here. So this is basically is inspired based by, by all of those things. What's interesting about this piece, again, is the fact that you can move objects and elements around. You will find certain elements that are inspired and are collected and found around Woodstock. And this is quite an amazing piece because you interact and then you can just customize as you wish. Yes, I love how interactive and interchangeable it is. Yes. Very, very unique. Talking about unique, this piece against the wall, I love it. Can you tell me more about that? Definitely. This piece is an amazing piece. This is a piece that encapsulates everything about this exhibition. All the inspiration, the found objects from all over the world, from my home to Taipei and every other piece. It really brings everything together and it's such an amazing piece. This opening comes after artistic residences in Europe and Taiwan, in which Andile has lived up to all that mentor Trevin McGowan encouraged in him. I'm so proud of Andile because he was given this opportunity. We've been discussing this with the, with the gallery for about a year, and he's done nothing but work towards the solo show, producing work at a scale and an excellence and an inventiveness that is beyond anything he's ever achieved before. So he's really taken this opportunity. He's given it his all and he's, he's nailed it. <laughs> he's, he's really delivered the goods and come up with an extraordinary body of work for this very special show. I think this is something new for the design world where we have located a talent that can hold its own with the voices of design from around the world that we see here in our gallery and in the major collections and museums we have here. To be here today in this opening of my first solo exhibition, Tamago, it feels amazing. It's an honor and it's a really a great achievement for myself and for my career. But not only for myself, but for my village, really, where I come from. Because I am 
a son of the soil, if we want to call that, from Engobozan. So this is putting my village, my country, the Africa at large into the map so that the world can see what we are about as Africans. Still in his 30s, Andile has already achieved what many artists spend a lifetime pursuing. And we're proud to bring you this milestone.